the fullness of Christ, you bet your booties it is. And you see how low we live? Yeah. Come on, that's true, that's true. Uh, I, for the sake of time, I could go right there, but we won't. Look what it says. There is one body, everybody say one body. One body. And one spirit, everybody one say one spirit. One spirit. Just as you were called in one hope, say one hope. One hope. Of your calling. Now, this is important. Everybody say one Lord. One Lord. One faith. One faith. One baptism. One baptism. One God. One God. And God of all who is above all and through all and in all. Everybody say one Lord. One Lord. One faith. One faith. One baptism. One baptism. How many believe that the Lord of Christianity is very important? Amen. Huh? Yes. The Lord of Christianity is very important. Paul's talking about one Lord, one faith, one baptism. If we believe the Lord of Christianity is very important, and we believe that one faith, that, the, that we have to have a definition to our faith, meaning we can't just believe anything and everything, amen? amen. There has to be a definition. It's one faith, one Lord, then there must also be one baptism. It's not a take it or leave it. Right. We don't take the Lord out of Christianity, and we don't take the faith out of Christianity. Right. What gives us the right to kick baptism to the curb? That's right. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Go with me to 1 Peter. I'm going to wrap this up, I promise. 1 Peter chapter 3. Start with verse 21. Peter here, he's talking about... He's speaking and he's talking about Noah and he's talking about his family and he's talking about his flood and the flood of that day. And he's, if you think about it, Noah and his family, as they passed through the flood waters, they went from one world to the next. They went from, think about how the world was when Noah was building the ark. It was corrupt. It was sinful. It was depleted. Everything that you could think of wrongly was happening while Noah was building the ark. But after the floods, as he comes through the flood waters, and he fi finally finds land, and he builds an altar, it's a new thing, amen? It's a new world, yes. it's free from sin, it's free from corruption, and all of a sudden, it's a newness of life. And so Peter here is, is collaborating the two as far as being born of Christ and repentant and being baptized. Look what he says here, and he's telling us that it's a picture of, the flood waters are a picture and a type of baptism. He says there is also an anti-type, which means that's what he's saying. This, he's giving them a synopsis here. He's saying it's just like Noah coming through the flood. It's just like that. Now, which now saves us baptism. Not the removal of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Peter understands baptism and its central action of the saving faith. If faith is real faith, then at some point there has to be an action. Amen? If you, if you say you believe in Christ, this is how they taught. If you say you believe in Christ, then at some point there has to be a real action to your real faith. Now let me just give you, let me just give you a, a quick a reference. I think I have it in my Bible somewhere. What would happen? And if you want to get out some notes, I'm going to give you ten things quickly. And we're just going to run through them and I'm going to be done. Let me, let me tell you how. How they baptized. You understand when people would, would repent, believe on Christ, and come into the doctrine of, of Jesus being Messiah. And they were leaving all and forsaking all their gods and their ideologies. And they were coming under the newness of Christ. This is what would have to happen. They just did not, they could not say, yeah, I believe in Christ. And they, they would just be joined to the body of Christ. What would happen was that they would come before the church. Amen. Dig this out. Tell me if I'm wrong. But I, I know I'm right. They would come before the church and they would say, we have had a repentant heart and we believe that Christ is Messiah and we want to be a part of this New Testament church. Then what would happen, they would come before, the Bible talks about coming before as candidates. And this is what would happen. Then the church, most likely a, a, a group of board pastor deacon people, would come and they would not judge them, but they would question them. They would say, okay, if you say you have believed on Christ, here, here's the question. Do you believe that God is Jehovah and he is the maker of heaven and earth? Yes, I do. Okay, then do you believe that Jesus Christ is, was the walking, talking kingdom of God, that he died on the cross, was buried, rose on the third day, and now sits at the right hand of the Father and he is your Messiah? 
Yes, I do. All right, then do you believe that the Holy Spirit came back in the day on Pentecost when Peter and Mary and all them people of 120 were filled and you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit through the, yes, I do. Then they would say, okay, and as the church would say, you have had, you, we believe that you have a repentant heart. Then they would go and be baptized. Huh? This takes the whole ideology of I'll do what I want when I want right. because I'm the church and I don't have to be a part of nobody. And That's right. That's right. Amen. Come on, come on. That throws that out into the gutter That's because right. you can't baptize yourself. That's right. Huh? That's right. They had to come before. That, this is how the New Testament church did it. They had to come before the church. And the church says, okay, this is how we believe. Is this how you believe? Yes, I do. All right. Now you have to be baptized. Because baptism, just as circumcision was a symbol of the promise of God to, to Abraham and the Jewish nation, baptism was a signified signal that I am rejecting all other lovers. Amen. That I am rejecting all other gods. I am even rejecting myself to be Amen. my God. Amen. And I am connecting and aligning myself up with Jesus Christ. The one, if there would have been one person who did not have to be baptized, it was him. But I'm aligning myself up to him and his obedience. Amen. And when I go, and this is what Peter was talking about. When you go down in the water, you are leaving one world Amen. for another. Amen. You are leaving one way of thinking for another. You are leaving one past for a newness. And that newness is the fullness of Christ. Amen. Write these things down for me if you want to. I love baptism because it's not theoretical. Either you've done it or you haven't. Right. Amen. Right. You ever ask somebody if they're a Christian? It's well, yeah, on Tuesdays, you know, and you know, and then I did this, and, and I took communion when I was twelve. And you go into this ten-minute sective asking if they're a Christian. But if you ask them if they've been baptized, you either you've been baptized or you have not been baptized. Right. Amen. Amen. That's why I love it. I hate all the gray stuff in the middle. Look, look at this. Look at this. Here's ten things. Ten statements about baptism. And this would be something.